So welcome to virtual sipping and painting Hampton. We're gonna paint the, um, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> uh, tree. This cool landscape. <laughs> I painted it Sunset so many times. Tree. What's that? Sunset tree. All right. It's, um, I painted this a number of times and sometimes it looks more like a desert and sometimes it looks more like a little island on, a, on an ocean in the background. So. I, I kind of think of it both ways, but uh, welcome and we'll, we'll get started painting together. So I hope you have with you uh, some supplies. I have with me a sample of the painting, which you also have available to you on Zoom in another frame. And you can always refer to that. And I have that here. And I have a canvas, two jars of water, and I have two jars because that just prevents me from running back and forth and getting more water, just easier to keep the brushes clean. And I've got a big one inch brush, a medium half inch brush, and a small little round brush. And I have a real basic set of paints here. You might have more at your disposal, but I just have a uh, white, black, yellow, red, and blue on this set. Uh, if you have other colors, purple will come in handy for this painting in particular. Um, I did not have any purple, so I'm just going to mix mine. You can also, I have this on a paper plate, and you could also keep handy an extra paper plate for mixing. Anyway, I am the, and my who is behind the camera, so um, Sabrina will be available to answer any questions over the uh, chat, as well as uh, helping me out with the video. Uh, I also have with me some paper towels for wiping the brushes on. So make sure you have that or an old t-shirt will also do. And uh, I wear gloves, but that's just because I don't like to get painty. They're not strictly necessary. Uh, these are the kind that come with like, um, you know, when you do your hair or something with those sets. But uh, not, not something you have to have. I just don't like to get painty. Oh, and a drink. That's always fun. So I have like a hard seltzer tonight, so. Get yourself a drink and we can have a little fun. And um, you can have music on your end. I think that generally we keep the students on mute, but you're welcome to unmute yourself if you have any questions and, and you can ask me that. We just, uh, because of uh, YouTube video rules, I guess we can't have music because of copyright issues. But, um, you know, if you want music on your end and you have it muted, that makes the party at your house. So very cool. So cheers to that. So for this painting, I think I'm going to get started uh, with the big brush, just dipping that big brush in the water jar. Are you all ready to get started? I don't want to kind of rush it, but for this painting, I'm going to just get started by wetting the canvas with water. So we'll just do that and kind of get used to using that brush and get some water on the canvas so that we uh, can thin out that paint a little bit. So we're using acrylic paint today and acrylic paint is thinned out with water and that actually sounds counterintuitive but it helps it dry faster if it's thinned out with water because it is kind of plastic and uh, the water kind of, we live in a nice dry climate, water uh, dries out of it fast and, and leaves that color behind if it's put on in a thin down layer. So I'm just going to start by wetting that whole canvas with water. And I've got a 16 by 20 canvas here and I'm working on an easel so that you can see it vertically but of course it's fine if it's uh, down on the table there for you or if you're working on a flat canvas that's cool too. So I'm going to start with uh, the top of that canvas going about a third of the way down, we have uh, sort of a sunset view in here, and it, it starts out uh, darker at the top with a little bit of blue. So I'm sticking with that big one inch brush, and I'm going to dip that brush in the water jar, and I just kind of um, uh, draw that up along the lip of the jar as the, with the wet brush, and then I'm going to dip that in the blue paint and start at the top and just get a little bit of thin down blue going right along that top edge. And I'm going to go about one third the way down the canvas or about 
maybe maybe six inches or so on this canvas. Well, or about a little bit wider than my hand. Just want to just get a kind of darker top of my sky going there. And then that's going to be reflected at the bottom in this sort of watery, uh, we have a watery lake or, or ocean there in the foreground. So I'm going to continue that along the bottom edge of that painting as well. So keeping with the big brush and the blue paint, just going along the bottom. I'm skipping that middle part because we're going to have kind of a sunset going in the middle. And we just want to spread that out with some water and our blue paint. Just picking that up from that paper plate, getting that acrylic going. Now, it's funny, I painted this painting a number of times and my husband was in the studio one time when I was doing it and he painted his as a desert painting and I painted mine as islands because you can kind of go in both directions with this. This foreground here, I think it was intended by the original artist to be water, but it can also kind of look like uh, just kind of dark sunset over the land. So it's up to you as the artist, you can decide how you want to paint up your painting. I think my husband ended up putting some cactuses in his version. We've done so many paintings around here though, it used to hang on the wall, but it's gotten uh, switched out of the lineup and replaced by newer ones. So it's probably, probably with a stack of completed paintings somewhere. I have to scare it up. I probably have mine too. And actually this painting is going to go up for sale at Sipping and Painting Hampton, the finished version of this. We sell all our finished paintings at a bargain. We have a little sale table that they go up for sale for I think $13 a painting, so a bargain for original art. So I just started by using that big brush, mixing with water and blue paint, and I did the bottom Oh, about three or four inches of that canvas with blue paint and a little bit more along the top edge. Kind of went down more like six inches on the top edge. And I just kind of let that, um, the bottom edge of that blue kind of fade off. And that I did that by mixing more water with the paint so that it, it gets thinner and thinner. The paint gets thinner and thinner in the water until it just kind of um, peters out entirely and it's just all water. That's how I get that fade out going. So more paint right along that top edge and more water along the bottom edge of the paint. You kind of always are controlling the amount of paint and water as we paint with acrylics. That's kind of the, the formula for using acrylics, kind of controlling the amount of paint we use as we go along mixed with our water. So and if you have any questions at any time, you can always uh, ask on the chat. Sabrina's keeping an eye on that for me. And uh, or you can unmute yourself and feel free to ask. And I'm using kind of a royal blue here, but you can always change up the colors on this painting. I think I see you doing more of a southwest one in there, which is really nice. Get kind of a turquoise going. I like that. And then I'm going to let that dry just a little. I am going to leave my uh, brushes sitting in the water jar when I'm not using them because that'll keep the brushes from drying out while I'm working. We want to make sure that we keep the paint wet on the brushes as we're working so that we can wash them later because uh, acrylic is kind of a plastic and it'll dry hard on the brushes if you allow it to dry. So uh, by leaving them in the water jar while we're working, we will be able to clean them after we're done tonight. So that is what I'm doing there. Normally, I mean, if I was working for many hours, it, you know, I'd want to be cautious about that because it loosens the glue in those metal ferrules on the brushes. But um, for one painting session, that'll be totally fine. And that way we'll have time to 
take a little sip from our beverage here. Give you a minute to catch up with me. And we'll get our give our paint a little bit of time to dry too. So uh, acrylic, normally I put it on in a layer, let that layer totally dry and um, and then we can apply another layer. And the way you tell if it's dry, besides rubbing it on the person next to you, is looking at it from an angle. And I don't know if you can see in my lights here, it's a little shiny looking when it's wet. It'll get kind of a chalky sheen when it's dry or not. <laughs> It'll lose a sheen when it, when it dries. And that way um, you can apply a second layer. If you apply a second layer while it's still wet, acrylic behaves kind of strangely and it'll pick up these brush textures and it'll kind of work against you. So you want to give it a chance to dry and that is why uh, relaxing white paint is so important. Um, if you're working your own studio and you're short on time, you can always use a hair dryer and dry that off. But uh, for our purposes tonight, we're just going to wait a minute, let it dry a bit. Oh, and while that's drying, let me tell you something about the studio. Uh, I think, as you know, we are selling art kits for all the paintings that we're doing, and we have a whole upcoming schedule at sippingandpaintinghampton.com where you can uh, see the classes that are coming up, and we're doing some in-studio classes with small groups and uh, Zoom classes as well. So you can pick up kits for the Zoom classes and bring those home uh, with paints and brushes and canvases and uh, join us for any upcoming uh, events or even schedule them. You can get a few friends together and schedule them and make your own party. All right, I just went over that bottom edge with a little bit of water on mine and I can, I can take a paper towel and run that over there too to get that fade going. Let me hold that up so that you can see that a little bit closer. I just kind of uh, adjusted that fade out on that bottom edge of where it fades to white. And the white is just the original canvas. So it, the blue paint got thinned down with enough water that it just faded to white, but it started to kind of, since I have it up on a canvas, it, the paint dripped down until it, it was making a hard edge. And that's why I went over it with a little bit of water. And then I uh, rubbed a paper towel over that to get that fade going again. So now I have water at the bottom, sky at the top. And in the middle here, we have a nice little twilight going, but I wanted to make sure that was pretty dry, both of those edges, before I put in that yellow, because obviously yellow, blue make green, so we don't want a green uh, to be up in our sky, because that would, to my mind, be a little odd. So I wanted to make sure I keep it blue and then yellow. So just waiting for that paint to dry a bit so that we don't get any overlap making green. But once that is done, it looks like mine, if you look at it from an angle, is chalky enough that it's dry. You can make sure you clean that big brush really well by swishing it around in the water jar. And I really swish it around pretty good to make sure it's real clean. And then blot it on the paper towel so that it's nearly damp, that one inch brush. And then I'm gonna dip that in the yellow paint. And I'm gonna just start in the middle there, filling it in with yellow because I want that nice twilight. And here I put the yellow paint on in the middle there and I dipped the big brush in the water jar just to spread that paint out with the water. So I put some paint on the canvas and then I'm using the water plain out of the jar just to spread it out. And I'm going up and down. I started the stripe in the middle, but now I'm going up and down so that I just barely hit those edges. I don't want to overlap my blue because I don't want green. So I just want to hit those edges that I already painted with that yellow. And here I um, am scooting that brush back and forth right along that edge to make sure I get kind of a straight edge and don't, don't go over it. And here again, if it does, if you do start to overlap, you can take a paper towel and just run it across there and then it won't drip down. I don't know if you have it on an easel if that's an issue, but 
because you always have that option. A lot of times when I was painting up on stage, just sipping and painting Hampton, I uh, set the music on and let everybody paint. And sometimes I make a mistake and real quick have to pick up the paper towels and, and fix my mistakes before anybody could see. But luckily with acrylic paint, you can do that. So you always have that as an option. And actually water acts as an eraser like here. I get a little drip of yellow so you can a little bit of water, go over that with paper towel and oh, magic eraser. So very cool. But I want to continue that yellow up. Right now that blue has dried in the top of my sky. So I here again, I just want to bump that yellow right against that edge, but not overlap it. Just touch it. Don't overlap so that it doesn't go green. Just want that to go across. So I kind of have, it looks, I think this is a flag of some country. <laughs> I should know that. But uh, there's blue at the top, yellow in the middle, blue at the bottom. You can always uh, tell me in the chat if you know the name of the flag. <laughs> we just have the color going. And by the way, I am going all the way around the edges with the paint. If you have a canvas that's one of those that are wrapped around the wooden stretcher bars like this one, you can make sure you go all the way around that uh, little half inch edge with the paint because it gives it a nice finished look. The painting when you're done and you won't need a frame for it when you hang it up. You can you can just kind of hang it up with those painted finish edges. So make sure you go all the way around there whenever you paint. I know I have to look and see if I did my far edge. I forgot that I got to do that blue on the far edge because I couldn't see it and I forgot all about it. You also want to make sure you paint top and bottom edges. Especially with ours we hang our sipping and painting, paintings up our stairwell. And so when you walk up the steps, you can see the bottom edge. So you wanna make sure you get that bottom edge so that every time you walk up the steps, you don't go, oops, I forgot. You gotta get that bottom edge going too. So I'm gonna put some blue paint right along that bottom edge. This is why I wear gloves, because that's how I get painty. I end up painting, I just painted my hands there, <laughs> holding up that. You might be a neater artist than I am. I'm all messy. So you might not need the gloves. Let me just stand up here, do that top edge as well. And while I'm going over that top edge, I can even darken up the very top part of the painting with blue, since I have that on the big brush. I'm going to spread out a little more blue paint at the top because that first pass of blue paint was a little bit see-through on mine and a little bit light. So if I go over it with a second layer of paint, and here I'm just swishing the brush back and forth along that top edge, about the top, about three or four fingers width on that top edge. And I'm just darkening up the very top of the painting. So it's a little darker blue and you get that twilight sky. All right, so we've done a, a few things there. Make sure I didn't confuse you. Let me tell you all those things again. We did a little more blue paint at the very top edge by doing a second layer. I went all the way around the edges with the paint and we did our yellow in the middle without overlapping the blue top and bottom. And uh, I set the big brush in the water jar and I'm swishing that around. Oh, Sabrina, my helper told me it's similar to the flag of Sweden. Actually, Kathy mentioned that on the Oh, chat. okay, thank you. I knew it looked familiar. <laughs> I love that. Vexillology, the study of flags. We're learning things. This is good. I was just fixing my blue at the bottom there where I had my little drips. Always dripping a little paint. I'm putting a little more blue at the bottom too. While I'm, well, I've got the paint on the brush. And this um, bottom uh, part of the painting, let's assume like the original painting had intended that it's a water, a body of water. So if you're going to paint a body of water, there is a flat horizon line to that because you want to sort of, well, 
assuming you want to give the impression that the water is calm and it's not a windy day. So we want to keep that uh, horizon line as flat as we can. And um, if you want, you know, if you wanted a wavier line, you could make sort of a little bit of a U-shape brush stroke, and then you'd have a little wavy water edge. But for the, because I'm copying the sample, I'm going to make it straight along that edge. So I'm just going to go over that uh, where the yellow touches the blue, just with a straight line going across. And I, I'm making these long brush strokes, but if you're not comfortable with that, you can just do it little short brush strokes one at a time, just try to keep that as flat as you can. And uh, it'll give the impression of a nice, calm, peaceful day on a lake or something like that. Or maybe it's a, maybe it's a peaceful ocean day, I don't know. But you can also paint this like we talked about as a desert landscape too. So if you wanted to make uh, hills on your painting and tell everybody it was a desert landscape, uh, that is your prerogative. It is your painting and you're the artist, so you get to decide what is the subject matter. That is the nice part about painting. None of these have to be a match set. Nobody's going to see my sample when this is done, so they will only see your work of art and you can express yourself the way you like. We love creativity at Sipping and Painting Hampton. All right, got my little water's edge going in there with my big brush and blue paint. And now, let's see, this sky has a lot of nice color in it. So we want to make sure we uh, get all that nice color going in the sky. Now, I'm going to leave behind my big brush. I'm just swishing that around in the water jar and I'm going to leave that sitting there. And then I can get out my medium sized brush and start to add a little bit of a twilight color going in the yellow part of the sky here. So I'm, I just wet that medium sized brush in the water jar and I'm going to pick up some of that red paint. You might also have orange at your disposal. You could use orange here too. And I'm just going to go along that yellow with some long lines of red. You will want to thin this down with water. Right now, mine are really bright, but I'm just going to thin those out with a little bit of water so that I just have a little bit of paint, but uh, just spreading that color out in that, in that middle area. And I want to leave uh, kind of the center kind of bright yellow or maybe just off center so that there's a hint of the sun in there. There's just a place where there's a light source coming the sun is in the middle there. We're just adding a little bit of uh, red or orange in there. You can also press the brush to the canvas on the edges and lift it up as you, as you uh, draw it towards the middle. So pressing the brush to the edge and just lifting it up as you come towards the middle. I'll do that a little slower. That's another option on those brush strokes. I, I'm swishing that medium-sized brush around in the water jar and just going over that with some plain water to thin out my color there a little bit. And I also was seeing, mine went on, I don't know if you can tell from this distance, I'll hold it up a little bit. It was getting a little bit of the canvas texture. Is that, is that uh, visible? You can, you can see if the paint's a little bit too dry, it picks up the the kind of plaid texture of the fabric on the canvas. So by adding a little water, it smooths it out and you get rid of that texture. So I like to use the water to do that. We're always controlling the texture of the paint with the water and the amount of paint that we're using on the brush. So there is that. Now, in some of these areas, I feel like I might need to go back and rebalance the amount of yellow but I'm going to let that dry before I do that. While I have red on the brush though, I'm going to continue to uh, go up. I want some of that glow. I don't want it to be confined just to the middle part of the painting. I want some of those red strokes to go up in the upper part of my sky. So I'm going to continue to go across with some red brush strokes over that transition edge. Oops, I'm getting drips. And pick up my paper towels and just pick up those drips. But I want to continue those long brush strokes into that blue sky too. 
and I'm letting some of that sky show through. I don't want to totally hide the sky back there. I want some of that blue to show through and of course some of the yellow to show through. We just want to make lines, think of it like Venetian blinds, making just lines of red going back and forth. And uh, then we'll have some blue and some red showing and some yellow. So we're getting a combination. And since I thinned out the red with water, it appears orange in spots too. So we have a nice bunch of different colors. It's getting purpley where the red is mixing with the blue and it's a little bit orange where the red is mixing with the yellow. So I'm getting a lot of nice color on this canvas. And I'm working with some water to thin it out here and there and to get rid of that canvas texture as well. So continually dipping the brush in the water jar, blotting it on the paper towels so that it's not too, too wet and drippy. And then using a damp brush to spread the paint over the canvas and to smooth it out. And remembering to going over those edges too. So kind of doing all these things at once. It's kind of a, kind of a process, doing it all at once. And I actually am using very little paint in this whole process. The, uh, I put a little paint on there and then I used the water to spread it around. And, and you can see my palette is actually pretty clean at this point, even though I put a lot of paint on that canvas. I've only actually dipped the brush in very little paint here and there. And I wipe the brush uh, on the corner or on the edge of the plate as I pick it up. So I'm using very, very little. I put a fair amount on there to start so I wouldn't have to keep getting paint out of the containers but um, I actually don't use a lot of paint when I paint. I know that sounds funny but uh, you don't need a whole lot of supplies. You can do a whole beautiful painting and with very little supplies necessary so that's very nice. Just need a little bit and I'm making long horizontal brush strokes and these are not real flat these brush strokes. It's okay if your hand wiggles a little bit and they're a little wavy and kind of give you an interesting texture, but I'm doing long dashes of color and getting some uh, overlap going with that red over the yellow and the blue. So that is how that looks. I'll give you a chance to paint yours up. I know I paint pretty quickly, so it must be time for me to do some sipping. Hopefully, let's see, I got that. I've been, I've been enjoying these uh, sparkling seltzers lately. It's summertime and they're nice and cool and refreshing. But you can also grab a snack. Uh, what do we have around here? Right, a lot of little clementines, nice for summer, right? So you can grab a snack too as you're painting. Just make sure to keep it away from the paint. I would say acrylic, it's, it's, uh, it's better than oil paint in terms of uh, cleanliness, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna get your food near your paint. <laughs> so um, just letting that dry for a minute there. And then maybe we'll add a little bit of sun in there. So right now I have more dark blue at the top, and then we had yellow in the middle, blue at the bottom, and we went over the yellow and the blue at the top with a little bit of those red long brush strokes. And right now I consider that to be kind of my first pass going with the red paint. I'm going to do a little bit of correcting. I see that it, you know, I'm going to let it dry a little bit. Here again, if you keep working the paint while it's wet, then it'll give you funny brush strokes. So we give it a minute, let it dry, or you can hit it with a hair dryer if you had that at your disposal. And I did leave my brushes sitting in the water jar. <laughs> Let me also let you know while we're letting that dry, let me, sorry, grab that over here. At the studio at Sipping and Painting Hampton, we do have these cute little branded face masks. So if you want to stop in and uh, we're selling those, whoops, <laughs> sorry, I have holding that upside down. We're selling those and uh, that is all the rage these days, right? Everybody needs a face mask. And then we have well, watercolor ones too. These are kind of Monet inspired. Uh, oh, they, they make them look different. You can wear them front or back, I suppose. And these these will hook over your ears, real comfortable little masks. So those are cute. You can pick those up at Sipping and Painting Hampton. 
a painting kit for our opening classes or just to paint at home. And we also have uh, painting kits for kids too. So uh, we have a lot of cute little uh, paintings for the kiddos. We have sun, moon, and stars. And um, let's see, what else do we do? Oh, I can't recall. Do you remember, Sabrina? We had a couple of kids' paintings. Going. Butterfly. Oh, that's right, butterfly. So we have, we have a bunch of different subject matter for them. So now we let that paint dry a little bit. And now we want a, a light source or brighter spot coming from kind of the center. So I'm thinking about that now because I want to adjust some of those uh, transitions and brush strokes that I have in the twilight part of my painting. And so I'm going to use white paint to do some of that adjusting. So if I thin down the white paint with a little bit of water, so say the paint is about the consistency of skim milk, if you thin it out with a little bit of water, then it becomes translucent. And then you can adjust uh, the uh, maybe harshness of the red brush strokes over the sky. I want to make them a little bit, um, a little bit mellower or seem to blend better. So while I uh, am doing that, I want a brighter uh, sun spot in the sky. And so we would put less water in the paint and make it more opaque, more white mixed with the, in with the paint. So using that medium sized brush, took that out of the water jar and wiped it on my paper towel. And now I'm gonna pick up the white paint. So I want more white paint to start and I'm gonna make a, a half circle Kind of a sunspot in that sky and it'll be a little bit translucent because the paint always is the acrylic paint always seems to be a little see-through it's okay if it's not you can always just make a bright white sun but i'm making a half circle right along that horizon line to start and let me hold that up i know that is far away you can see that little half half dome little little sun coming out of the water there and then I have that white on the brush. I can either dip that in the water to thin it out more, but I already used a lot up on the sun, so I'm not even going to do that. I'm, on mine, I'm just going to start to go across, and anywhere I see those lines are a little harsh, I'm just using what's left over on that brush to go over those lines. Now, if you find there's too much water or too much paint on the brush, you can real quick wipe that off in the paper towel, and then you'll have less paint on that brush. Or you could dip it in a water jar draw the paintbrush up along the edge of the jar and get some of the paint off that way. So all different ways to control the amount of paint on the brush. Now here I totally ran out of it. So I dipped just the tip of the bristles on the plate and I'm drawing that up along the edge just to get a little tiny bit of paint on the edge. So that's another way to control that. And I'm coming off my sun and pressing the brush to the canvas near the sun and lifting it up and off as I move away from that sun to get an impression of the glow coming from that half circle that I made. So and I just mentioned a second ago that the paint is a little translucent as you put it on and it especially seems to dry that way. It's really funny. It actually seems to go on a little thicker and then it dries. I don't know if you can see that on the zoom but it, it dried a little more see-through. So I'm actually gonna hit that with another layer of white to make the sun itself a little more opaque. We don't want it to be quite so see-through. We wanna make that the, the bright spot. So covering over my brush strokes from the past. Don't want that red showing through. And I'm doing that more in the middle of that half dome shape. And I let the edge, uh, I didn't go over the edge of that half dome shape because then it has that fade out. So there's always kind of different ways you can handle that. And I have a little bit of white uh, in the sky more near that sun. You can also, so I'm going uh, over the sky near the sun with these long horizontal brush strokes. If you wanted to, you could also radiate out in a starburst pattern and uh, make the the sun look more typically shiny, you know, more star shaped that way. You could, you could uh, use that bright sunburst look, but I'm uh, just sticking with these horizontal brush strokes for now. 
near my sun and I'm pressing the brush to the canvas near the sun and lifting it up as I move away from that sun. And actually I just corrected, I had a kind of smudgy edge of my water so I'm using the white to correct that too. The great thing about acrylic is you can always make adjustments and corrections and nobody will know what is beneath the previous layers. So it's almost like you meant to paint it that way and it comes out better than you, than you could ever think because you get to make the corrections. So I'm gonna just leave that medium-sized brush and toss it in the water jar so I can hold this up and show you a little bit closer what I've done there. I painted a half circle for the sun and then I went over it with a second layer right in the middle and long horizontal brush strokes coming off away from that sun by pressing the brush to the canvas on the sun and lifting it up and off as I go left and right away from it. I want to make sure I get that fade out and if it doesn't fade out enough make sure you clean that brush in the water jar and it's just damp blotted on the paper towel and then you can use just the plain damp brush just filled with water to uh, use the wet paint on the canvas and spread it out so that you get that fade also. See, as the paint is still wet, you can spread it out with a damp brush. So another thing like here, if you find you have rough transitions of color in some areas, like I think I'm gonna put a little bit of translucent white over my red there. I just swish that medium sized brush around the water jar and blotted it on the paper towel and I'm just picking up a tiny bit of white with the tips of the bristles of the brush. And I'm just gonna switch that around up here because I think I, I had that canvas texture shown there and that always makes me, uh, I just like when it's a little bit smoother. So anywhere I see that, I'm just gonna go over with that uh, skim milk uh, kind of white. You know, it's thinned out, the paint is half white and half water so that it's the consistency of skim milk and I'm going to use that to go over some of those areas and it'll get rid of that canvas texture and appear to smooth out the paint. So I'm doing that and I'm just doing that in the areas where it's red and well it doesn't even matter I could do that up here in the in the red and blue too. I was going to say I did in the red and yellow but it would work no matter where I do it with that half thinned out paint I'll show you that up close. It, it uh, makes that nice and smooth, that paint. If I thin it out with a little water and go over it, we get that nice smoothed out paint. So now I have uh, red going over my blue up there and red and yellow. Got my bright sunburst. See, and here again, it dried a little a little see-through. I'm going to even bump up my sun one more time with another layer of paint. Bump up that half circle with some plain white because I want that real bright. My sun setting over my desert or water. There we go. Got that nice bright spot. And, and then we got water in the foreground here. Now you can see in my sample here and also up on Zoom if you want to look in that other square that says Sipping and Painting Hampton. You can always bring that up as your big spot on Zoom. That we do have a reflection of the sun in the water here. Now it looks like water because we have these long dashes uh, kind of radiating down from it. You would want to make them at least as wide as the sun near the horizon line and you could make them uh, skinnier or smaller, narrower little dashes as you go down and away towards the bottom edge of the canvas. So I'm taking, you can, and actually um, I'm using my medium sized brush because I have a little flat half inch, but this is where you could also switch to the little skinny brush if you need a little more hand control because I'm making skinny lines and sometimes it's easier to do skinny lines with a skinny brush. So totally up to you. I'm holding this one flat. I, I just really love this half inch brush. So I hold mine flat and I'm going across with long dashes of white paint over that foreground area. And I can make those little shorter little dashes as I get down to the bottom. 
So it's like an upside down triangle, more or less. So you have longer dashes near the sun and shorter ones near the bottom edge of the canvas. See that up close? I just uh, did that as a first pass, so I now I need to make that a little bit more prominent. You can hardly see them, so I want to do that one more time. Some long dashes and then shorter ones as they get to that bottom edge. And if you mess up, if you go too far to the left or right, or you get too much white touching each other and it gets totally white on you, then we'll wait for it to dry and we can add some blue back in. There's always an option to rebalance what we've done. And actually, I think I'm gonna go a little bit wider than my sun near that horizon line so they get even more of a glow. And I'm letting those lines fade off left and right by pressing the brush to the canvas in the center of the brusher and lifting it up and off left and right as I sweep my hand back and forth. So if you haven't done that, it's okay. You can always go back in over that with some blue too if they're not uh, fading out for you. Another thing you can do is take that brush around in the water jar and just use a damp brush to let those edges fade out. I'm just taking that paint that's on there and it's all it's still wet and I'm using the, the water to just dry those edges and fade them out. And we'll hold that up so you can see that. I hope that it's not messing with my focus and you can see that real well. And we have our little reflection beneath our sunlight. Oh, I like that. So now, I think I want, I have uh, only gone over the bottom with one layer of paint. And so I have light blue. Uh, it's lighter than I want it left and right. So I want to make sure I add a little bit more blue in. I can stick with my medium sized brush, but I have kind of a lot of canvas real estate still in there. So I think I'm going to go back to my big brush. It's totally up to you as, as the artist. And, you know, with your own painting, you might need to make different adjustments. So you can take a look at your painting and decide what you need to do. Always make sure as you're painting that you step back from your work. Keep in mind that the artist always sits about a foot and a half from the work, so you're sitting really close, but the viewer is going to be enjoying your painting from many feet back and taking it all in at once. So you want to make sure you step back and look at it periodically so that you're taking the whole thing in and making any adjustments as needed as you're working on it. So I'm going to go back to my big brush on my painting and darken in some of the edges on my ocean foreground here because I want that blue to be a little bit deeper color. So I'm pressing the brush to the canvas with some blue paint that I'm picking up off that plate. And here I'm not thinning it out really. I'm just using the blue as it has come out of the container. And I'm pressing the brush to the canvas and just letting it fade off kind of where I'm already have got my uh, sunlight reflection. I don't want to go over those white stripes I just put in there. I want to leave those in there, but I want the uh, left and right to be darker blue. So I'm going over that with a second layer of paint. And your painting might look a little different, so you've got to step back from yours and see any adjustments that you need to make. I wanted mine to be darker in the sky. Oh, and there's a spot that needs darkening up while I have the blue on the brush. So darker at the top edge of the canvas, and then left and right on the bottom, a little bit darker too. Sometimes you miss a spot, so got to go over there. Do have the joke around here, hey, you missed a spot. So sometimes you gotta go and fix those. And as the paint dries, sometimes it dries a little thin and then it seems to, have, you don't remember missing a spot, but then, hey, there's one that got missed. And here I'm using, uh, I had what was left on the brush, just a little bit of thinned out blue, and I'm using that to smooth out that part where it's blue, but that I'm getting that canvas texture again. And I'm also, I have brush strokes that are showing here that are not real flat, but it's giving like a nice transition. Like your brush strokes don't have to be perfect. You know, I've been going horizontally back and forth this whole time, but they're not 
uh, let's say they're not perfect. They're not perfectly flat. They're kind of a little bit wavy uh, up and down lines. And that gives it an interesting, nice texture. It kind of gives a little bit of an impressionistic uh, texture, if you will. Kind of, you know, that Monet feel. Got little short brush strokes going back and forth. And depending on what kind of painter you are, you might make shorter brush strokes and make even more texture, which is really nice. I am not the most patient of painters, so I tend to fill in with longer brush strokes, but maybe if you have more time and uh, you have a lot of patience, you can make nice little short brush strokes and it'll look just like Monet painted it. All right, or if you really have a lot of patience, you could go with uh, little dots like Surratt, you know, like um, from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, where they step up to the painting and then you see all the little dots. <laughs> that, that takes a lot of time there. Sabrina's laughing at me in here from behind the camera. All right, so now I have darker blue at the top, darker blue left and right on the bottom, a uh, reflection of my sun going. And if you need to rebalance while you have blue paint on the brush, you could add some blue back in. This totally depends on your, your own piece. You know, I don't know if this is necessary, but here and there, I'm just touching up some of my blue while I have blue on the brush. Why not, right? It was already on the brush and I didn't have to clean it. So I'm using it just to fill in and fix up my reflections just in case I was messy, which I always am <laughs> when, I make the, make, when I make the initial pass of paint. So with acrylic, with subsequent layers, you can always fix it up and that's what I'm doing. So when I'm done with that, then just drop that brush in the water jar and you can see we have a nice ocean texture going there. And here again, I used horizontal brush strokes to keep that water appearing flat. If you make little U-shaped brush strokes, it'll make the water appear a little wavy. So that is always an option for you. I think on this uh, sample, there's maybe a little bit more up and down. So I could do that. I could do that and make it a little bit of a breezy day. I don't know. It depends on your mood. If you want your, your waters to be still waters or if you want them to be... Um, a windy or breezy day on the water. Kind of depends. Maybe you want to put a sailboat in later and you want it to be a little breezy because you got to have a little breeze for your sailboat. It is up to you. Or maybe you just have a powerboat, a motorboat, and you just want to keep the water flat. I just picked up my medium sized brush and I'm going over some of those white strokes. Always making little adjustments and this will get you. Give you an opportunity to catch up with me also. So now I'm holding that medium sized brush and it's got white paint on it and so I may as well add some of these clouds in the sky. Now we have some puffy little clouds and it's totally up to you if you want to put clouds in your sky and make it a, a kind of puffy little cloudy day but I want to sort of caution you that you need very little paint when you make clouds. Of course, clouds are water vapor. And so key word there being water. We want to make mostly water on the brush to start and just a little tiny bit of uh, white paint. So here again, texture of skim milk. You want to make, I always say skim milk because you want to thin the paint uh, with water, but you don't want to make it so thin that it drips on your canvas. So it is a balance. But I just have a little water for my damp brush and a, and a little bit of paint and I'm using that and I'm kind of swirling that around on the plate to keep that going on that. Uh, and I, I kind of, you know, I kind of just want to make it see through on the plate there and I swish it around. It's hard to see because it's white on a white plate. But when you put it on the canvas, and you make little spiral brush strokes, you'll see immediately just how much paint you have in there and you'll know whether you need to adjust it or not. So I'm swirling this medium sized brush around and making puffy little clouds in my sky that are more, I kind of think of them as um, higher in the middle, you know, just, but it's, you know, clouds, they can be any shape. 
but I'm making mine kind of uh, more or less triangular shaped so that they're higher in the center of the top of the cloud and kind of flat along the bottom, kind of those puffy little cumulus clouds. And then I can add a little bit more white. I just dipped my medium sized brush in the white paint and adding just a little more white paint that's not thinned out along the bottom edge of that uh, cl cloud. And I want to make swirly brush strokes so I get a nice uh, scalloped edge. I want it to be rounded, but it has more white on the base of the cloud. It's still see-through. You can see that sky from behind it, so it's a little bit of water in the paint, but more water in the paint at the top, so it's very see-through at the top. So let me hold that up to the camera so you can see that real close to get that. And then you can add as many clouds as you want in your sky. This sample has a bunch. I don't know. I don't know how many that has in there, maybe a dozen. But I can just add a whole bunch of little clouds in my sky. I think I'm going to add a few more at the top. And I'm swirling that brush around. I had more white paint on it to start. And now I'm going to dip that medium sized brush in a water jar, draw it up along the lip of the jar to just get most of that paint out of there. So it's just water and then swirl it around the top. We'll get that fade out going. And I can also wipe it on my paper towel and it'll take some of that paint off the brush too. So it's see through paint at the top of the cloud. So it's all different ways to adjust the paint on the brush is what I'm saying there. And I just need a little bit to make a few clouds. And you can vary the size of your clouds, make some bigger and some smaller. I'm keeping them all, I guess, pretty similar sizes on this painting, but they don't all have to be identical. You can make some of them bigger and some smaller. You can overlap them. They don't all have to be separate. It's totally up to you. I kind of let them taper, uh, kind of, they're kind of almond shaped or triangular shaped so that the edges are um, more pointy or fade out. That's the way they are on this painting. You can, uh, Look up in the sky though and make any kind of different you know, shape clouds that you like. The other day we saw a cloud that looked like, oh, it looked like a country. I think it looked like Thailand. <laughs> was what we decided. You just never know. Sometimes they look like teddy bears. You know, you can make any kind of shape clouds you want. Cloud shapes. That's a fun summer game. But more white paint, more thick white paint at the bottom edges of those clouds and kind of fading at the top because it, it'll give them some sort of uh, sense of shape in the sky or uh, I, I kind of more in the middle too, I would say they fade out and they get thin along the edges and sometimes I'm going over some of the ones I already painted because that paint dried really clear. So you have to go over with the second layer of paint. You can get these little puffy clouds going in the sky. And I'm making little swirly brush strokes. I'm going back and forth, uh, going uh, over, making upside down U shapes and, and U shapes at the bottom. I just want scalloped edges. So I have little puffy round clouds just swirling those out letting them fade off on the edges and i'm using my medium sized brush with this because i like that brush but you can always use a small brush sometimes people like rounds i have a flat here and that does give a particular shape you might find that you like a round brush better so it depends on what you have that you're painting with and you can make some of these clouds go right off the edge of your canvas too this one is running off that right hand side and i'm doing these more towards the top of my sky i'm gonna uh just do them about as low as the transition between the blue and the and the red yellow and i'm doing that because it'll actually help the transition it'll help make it look natural i don't want it to be a hard edge so i'm going to use the clouds to kind of help me hide that edge too. 
And if I had any rough transitions like here, there were a little bit of rough transitions on that uh, texture of that sky. I can use my clouds to kind of fudge it and you won't even know. It'll be like I meant it that way. It was perfect, right? So I'm using watered down white paint. And now that you can barely see my sky through it, it looks like I painted it perfectly. It was perfect. It was perfect the first time. Haha, <laughs> you just never saw it. There we go. And a little bit more white at the bottom. Let me hold that up so you can see it nice and close. And it smoothed those transitions. And I've got six clouds going in this sky. I am not the most patient of the painters. I don't know if I want to get a whole dozen in there. It depends on how many clouds you want in your own painting. Maybe I'll put one more. I, I tend to like odd numbers when I paint. This is a personal preference. I always think you want a little bit of unbalanced uh, elements in your painting because it, uh, I just think it makes for a nice composition. This is totally up to the artist because you can make an argument either way that this is good. Uh, you can make an even number and, and argue that that's a very pleasant, calm sky. Uh, but, but I like, I, just, I like a little bit of, um, activity or movement in my composition. So I always feel like odd numbers help that along. So I'm going to make a seventh cloud. That's my weird little numerology of painting. But uh, that would be like, I don't know, I wonder if there's an art theory class anywhere where people discuss these ideas. It'd be interesting. <laughs> like art ethics. <laughs> But uh, I like odd numbers. I just think it's nice. My son and I, we discuss things like this. We have different, very different styles. And uh, every artist has their own unique style. You'll find in your handwriting, you use certain shapes. And that is reflected. Those kind of shapes that you make naturally with your hands are reflected in your artwork. In, uh, and that's what makes every artist have their own unique style. You know, when you're at a summer art festival and you go from booth to booth and all the artists have a different, very distinctive style of painting that they'll show. And if you, um, you know, it's the same way we all have different handwriting. We all make different shapes that way. It's just reflected in uh, these big, bold shapes that we're making with these brushes. So if you want to cultivate your artist style, I always say you should keep a doodle book and just doodle and find out what shapes come naturally to you and you can use those shapes as the basis of your artworks and kind of work up your personal visual style visual language from the, the shapes that you make when you doodle i think that's a nice nice kind of exercise to do i just use my fingers to fade out that paint. I was making the edges of those clouds. That's also why I get painted because sometimes I rub the canvas with my fingers. That's an option to let the paint fade out. Sometimes I see that there and do that without thinking about it. But uh, if you do get paint on your hands, acrylic paint, it's okay. It washes off the soap and water. For whatever reason, it tends to prefer warm water. It's easier to come off in warmer water, but it'll come off the of soap and water and uh, as a sort of nice secret of getting acrylic paint is I use a little um like a what do they call that it's a little brick that they sell at the hardware store that they use for drywalling that's rough like a uh, um, oh what do you call that <laughs> you know that little oh I can't think of it oh, now I think of it it's a little, little little rough thing you rub on your hands and uh, you can also use pumice soap to get the paint off and it likes to come off with soap and water. So now I have a little seven little puffy clouds in my sky. Hopefully you've got some clouds going in your sky. And now I think I need to add a little bit of land's edge along the water there. We have some islands or land mass in the, in the background of my sample here. And this looks like you're looking out over a bay to a distant island in the background so i want to make sure and this is where you might want to switch the little skinny brush 
I'm going to use my medium sized brush just because I like it, but you can switch to a skinny brush if you want to make sure you get that shape just so and use that to come up with your islands. And you can make this any shape, but it's going to come uh, just from the water's edge. And you can either make this purple paint, you can mix a little bit of red and blue. I'm going to do that. I'm going to see how that looks. Mix a little bit of red and blue together on my plate since they're next to each other there with my medium sized brush. And I'm going to go along that uh, edge where the sky meets the water here. And I'm going to make huh, more or less a flat line. I'm not very neat, but I'm making the edge uh, of the land right in the water there. And I'm just going to go make a wavy line coming up out of the water for my land mass there. And it's totally up to you what shape you want. This is more of a, a straight line up out of the water, or you could come up at a gentle angle. It's up to you. I'm just coming out of that water with a little bit of an island shape. And I mixed a little bit of red and blue together to get a purple. And I'm going around that edge where the canvas wraps too. I want to make it look like my land is just continuing right around that edge. I'll show you that in just a second up close. I want to make sure you can see that. And here, see I use that medium sized brush. I'm going to have to switch to my little skinny brush because I want to, uh, for my land here, I want a little bit of a point right in the water there. So I'm going to use a skinny brush to make that easier. The little skinny brush give you more hand control. So sometimes that's nice to use. And I overlapped the water about a half inch down beneath that horizon line so that it overlaps the water and the sky. That's what that looks like up close. Can you see my little landmass? It gets wider towards the edge of the canvas and just fading out into the water. But you can come straight up out of the water if you like, like this sample. And uh, there, you know, there, there are options. There's also a landmass on this side, the left side of the painting too. So you can uh, make another little island. You could make it one continuous thing, but then it would overlap the sun. So I'm, I'm going to skip over the sun and I'm going to make a land mass on the left coming off the left edge of the painting. And I'm going to leave that sun sitting right on the water's edge and I'm totally visible. So it's like, two little islands left and right. This is the island vacation I'm not going on this year. I'm painting it instead. I'm going, it's all in my head, but that's okay. So I got a little land on the left hand side and that went on a little bit uh, watered down. I'm gonna have to wait for that to dry. I'll go over the edge, but I'm gonna wait for that to dry and I'm gonna go over that and I'm gonna hit it with another layer of paint when it dries because it went on a little thin. I don't immediately try to fix that because that's where with the acrylic paint it'll start to pick up some funny brush textures. Sometimes you have to be patient with yourself while that's drying. I'm just going to do something else with my time. I'm going over that edge where it was kind of messy. I'm making sure all my edges are nice and neat. That'll give me something to do while that island dries because if I try to work it I'll be overworking the paint and it'll just work against me. It'll it'll pick up funny brush textures and that will not look good. So I'll find something else to do. I'm gonna fix up my edges. This is called a gallery wrap when you paint the edges like this because galleries use this trick to keep from buying frames for all the artwork because framing is really pricey. So you don't always want to do that. You want to paint around that edge so you don't even need a frame for it. So I'm just going over that edge that's resting on the on the edge of the easel there. So now we got our land overlapping our water just a little bit, overlapping the water's edge so it comes down into the water and then overlapping the sky just a little bit. And I made them uh, a little bit taller left and right. They're only about, boy, that one's only about an inch tall, maybe an inch and a half or two fingers width. Not very much. Just a little 
land masses in the water. And now I better step back and look at it and see if it's shaping up like I like. This depends on your own personal painting. I'm gonna use this opportunity to fix up the yellow in my sky. I feel like I have on my painting, since I use very little paint, I still have some canvas texture showing through that red paint in the yellow. So I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow mixed with white to just fix those areas. And this is totally, it depends on your painting. I'm mixing a little bit of white with yellow on my feet. I'm just gonna go back and forth over those edges. But uh, you may not need to do this to yours because you might have other things going on on your painting. But just step back and look at it. And make sure you're taking the whole thing in and that all the details are shaping up the way you like. Another thing I look at when I step back from painting is how I'm spreading the paint around the canvas. So if, if you're uh, looking at a whole composition, keep in mind that your eye will move across it nicely if it um, kind of sees the colors back and forth across the painting. So sometimes you want to distribute different colors around the painting. And here's again where we come up with like numbers, numerology in painting. So right now I have a purple island right that's bigger than my purple island left. So that's a nice balance. But another thing I could do is take a third area of purple paint up in my sky if I wanted to, or, or even three more. So maybe five. Uh, all I'm saying is you might want to spread a little bit of purple here and there around other parts of the painting if you want your eye to bounce back and forth. Totally optional. But that's kind of the way I think of it as an artist. I wanted you to kind of, I kind of wanted you to get in my head as long as I'm doing this uh, stream of consciousness teaching. I want you to know like how the artist thinks. Hey, that's the only reason like while I'm here is to kind of give you that information and that way you'll know for when you're doing your painting on your own. Right now, I'm just going over some of these transition areas with white mixed with yellow and smoothing those out in my sky. I feel like some of that red was really prominent and I, I wanted to knock that back just a little bit. So I'm adjusting that on my painting. But yeah, I'm thinking about that, that purple too. And that's another area of adjustment I could do. So I'm going to clean off the brush, just to make sure you always clean off the brush between colors. <laughs> Got to clean that off really well. And then you can go back to purple. I don't want any of that yellow on the brush, otherwise I'll get some, some strange color. I haven't even used the black. I was just thinking that's, the, that's going to be our last step, making our happy little tree up there. But I'm going to just add a few streaks of purple in that sky. I feel like I want to bring that out just here and there in a few spots and that will draw my eye around the canvas from those islands. Kind of a little visual treat. That's just just a nice little bit of purple here and there. And I made that, that purple, thinned it out with a little bit of water. So now on my painting, I've got little island left, bigger island right, purple, purple, purple spots. And then you get a nice, your eye kind of goes in a circle around those areas without really thinking about it, you know, just when you're taking in the whole composition. Little artist trick there. And then we've got my, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, little happy puppy clouds. And you'd want to look at your clouds now that they dry because sometimes that white dries a little bit thin and if you want to add a little more white to any of those clouds especially along that bottom edge because you want to uh, pick up that reflection from the sunlight you could add a little more white in as well what i'm going to put in my tree next so it's actually not <laughs> that necessary to do that one there because it's going to be behind my tree. In acrylic, I should have said this a long time ago, we're always working background to foreground. I did, I did start teaching the painting that way, but I never mentioned whenever we work acrylic, because it's a layered uh, kind of a medium, we always work background to foreground. So 
I'm doing all these distant, more distant elements in the painting, and then I'll add my foreground tree, and that'll be the last part of the painting. And it's nice with acrylic, we can do these in a pretty short period of time. If you're working in oil paint, oil stays wet for a really long time, but you tend to have to work them over a longer period of time. The interesting thing, uh, like Bob Ross, he worked his paintings wet in wet is, is the technique he used. So he was able to do those paintings in a pretty short period of time. Um, we're a big fan of Bob's, because we teach, uh, Nancy teaches the Bob Ross classes at Sipping and Painting Hampton. And she's a certified Bob Ross instructor. I don't know if you knew that, but she has gone down to their school in Florida uh, for several years and learned different techniques every year. Uh, some years it's trees and some years it's mountains and some years it's uh, florals. And she's learned a bunch of different, all the different techniques. I know she's gone down a few years in a row and she teaches the Bob Ross classes here in Denver now. And um, it's really rare. There's not, you know, the school being far away, there's, uh, it's really rare to find a certified Bob Ross instructor. So definitely take a class from her because she knows all of their proprietary techniques and uses all the Bob Ross proprietary materials. And um, when she teaches those classes, she'll come away with a fantastic oil painting. And those paintings are done, the, the classes are longer. I think they're six hour long classes. And um, you do paint wet and wet, but oil paint, it takes a good month to dry after that. You kind of leave it in the garage and let it cure the oil paint. The linseed oil eventually, I guess, evaporates out of the paint and it dries. But uh, acrylic paint, you can do in one evening. So that's really nice. And uh, it's relatively less messy. All we have to do is clean these brushes at the end of the evening. So right now I just have them sitting in that water jar. So now we can paint our happy little tree. And this tree on our sample comes uh, from all the way at the bottom edge of our canvas and goes almost all the way to the top. So it's totally up to you uh, where you want to put your tree. This one sort of assumes that there's land that the viewer is standing on and you can't even see the roots of the tree. It's beneath the uh, picture line, beneath the bottom edge of that canvas. So the uh, we're not even going to have to do the roots of the tree. It's just the trunk of the tree coming straight off the bottom of the canvas and going up in the top. Now keep in mind as you're doing trees that they're always widest from the point of growth and they get skinnier as they move up and away from that point of growth and the outer twigs and branches are all sort of fade out to skinny little lines. So it's helpful here. I'm <laughs> sorry, my little messy paint hands I'm showing you. Um, but it's helpful here to use a skinny brush because we're going to uh, end up doing those little skinny branches at the edge and sometimes it really helps with hand control if you um, have that thin brush to make those thin branches. So I took that little skinny brush out of the water jar and since it was in there I wipe it on the paper towel. I actually have a, my little, uh, I have an old t-shirt. You can use either cloth or paper towel. I have both sitting here. but make sure you wipe that brush off and I do lay that down flat to wipe it off to make sure I get the water off of the handle of the brush and the ferrule as well as just the tip of the brush because you don't want it to drip down as you're painting. But taking that little skinny brush and I'm going to dip it in the black paint. Uh, we're going to have a silhouette of that tree so this is just black and think about where you want to place your tree. This one is about a third of the way from the left side of the canvas. So at least the hands width, or maybe a little bit more from the left edge of the canvas. And coming up from the bottom edge, I'm going to make the tree trunk of that tree. And I'm using my little skinny brush and it's going to be wider at the bottom of the tree. So assuming that the roots are not visible, but they're at the bottom there. It's going to be widest at the very base. And as I go up, I'm just going to make a skinnier and skinnier little tree trunk. Now think about how you want your tree to divide. This sample tree divides up into a number of branches. And I always think about my trees 
like clouds, trees are all different, of course, but I'm going to sort of use this formula in my mind to make it easy. I'm going to break my branches off in either Y shapes or V shapes as I move up. So I'm moving up and away from the base of the trunk and moving up in the shape of a Y or shape of V every time I break off into a different branch. And every time a branch comes off the main trunk, it gets skinnier as it moves up and out. So the branches can be as wide as the tree trunk, but they get skinnier as they move away from the tree trunk. So first I'm gonna make that trunk and I am, this paint's been sitting on this plate now for an hour, so it's a little bit dry. So I'm dipping that little skinny brush in the water and I'm mixing it around with the paint and I'm kind of spinning that around on the plate because uh, I want it to be the consistency of Hershey's syrup now this time because uh, we don't want it to be see-through. So we're, we've moved from skim milk to Hershey's syrup now. We just want a little bit of water in the paint, but enough to make it flow smoothly for us. So it, we don't want it dry. It's dried out on that plate, so we got to add a little water to it. But using that little skinny brush and making the tree trunk and go slowly so you get think about the shape of your tree. You don't have to do this fast and you can always practice on a piece of paper before you commit to the canvas if you're feeling unsure about your uh, tree. Uh, if you're watching this video later you can always pause the video but um, feel free to uh, just practice on your own if you don't want to do it on your canvas to start. Sometimes people want to test this out before they apply it to the canvas, but then I'm going to go up for this one. I'm going to do the trunk just above the horizon line, and then I'm going to break it off into a Y shape to make a branch that branches out. So you can see that looks like the letter Y just above that bottom edge. And I always want to make it wider at the bottom, so I might have to go back and widen that out. And I also want to make the branch widest where it hits the trunk and then skinnier as it moves up and out. So I'm lifting the brush off as I move away from the tree trunk to just let it fade off. Now you can, if you have skinnier brushes in your collection, you can go to a tinier brush as you move away from the tree trunk if you want to make little skinnier uh, branches and twigs. That's up to you. If you don't, just lift the brush away from the canvas and just use the tip of the brush, little skinny tip edge of the brush, and then you can make those branches skinnier. So you just use a lighter and lighter touch. But every time I move away from the point of growth, I'm breaking them off into little Y shapes. Hold that up real close. Little Y shapes and little V shapes. And I'm moving up and away on my tree. You can go in a downward direction. You know, your tree could be a totally different species than mine, but um, I'm doing them more in uh, an upwards diagonal on all my brush strokes on this, because I'm following this sample right here. And what's fun about this painting is if you're totally, uh, <laughs> if you end up at thinking your, your branches came out funny, you can hide the branches with the leaves that are coming up towards the end. <laughs> so it's kind of a good painting to practice on if you uh, ha are new to painting branches because you can always obscure them with a whole canopy of happy little leaves. <laughs> so it's totally up to you. Uh, another thing is if you're fully caffeinated from your breakfast beverage still and your hand wavers, that's also a nice thing. Right now I showed you pretty straight lines on my tree and that is just uh, my default. I tend to go with straight lines, but uh, it's actually nice if you use a little bit of a wavy line as you make your branches because it'll make your tree look a little more natural. I, I, I don't know why, I always forget that when I start painting trees and I start with straight lines, maybe because I am thinking of letters Y and V, but these are not letters. These are nice natural trees, so it's okay if your hand shakes a little bit and you get little wavy lines and get a back and forth going because then you'll get a nice natural looking tree. And what's nice about that too is that wherever they the shapes bump out a little bit, that's where you can add a twig or a branch. And 
they can also overlap. So well, let me show you that. I've got that going on. These are a little bit more wavy here. I should add a little bit more wave to my lines and they can overlap as well. They, they don't all have to be separate. And you could do as many branches on your tree as you like. On this sample tree, on our painting, they go all the way to the top. So I can go way up here. I gotta add a little more water to my brush. See, when I went on that first pass, you can see that canvas texture showing through. I added a little more water to the paint to get rid of that canvas texture, make that paint the consistency of Hershey syrup on the plate, and then you can get a nice opaque black line going. And I am leaning my hand against that canvas there, but I can do that because the paint beneath it is dry. Make sure if you lean your hand on the canvas that the paint is dry, otherwise you'll both uh, mess up the background and you'll get paint on your hand. So you gotta be careful, make sure that's dry. But um, leaning my hand there and I'm going all the way up towards the top and I can make as many branches as I want. I'm going to make taller branches uh, directly above my uh, trunk and I'm going to make shorter ones left and right so that it's more of a rounded out canopy of leaves on my tree. The whole shape of the tree is going to be Oh, lollipop shape, if you will. And I can, I can paint a little faster because it's okay if these are wiggly lines. You don't have to paint this quickly. In fact, you probably should not. You should carefully paint your lines. You don't have to go fast. Uh, but now that I have that basic structure in, I can just add those all in. I want to make sure, like right there, I bumped out the paint a little more. Always uh, want to make it thicker as I move down. So if I make it uh, too wide higher up, then anywhere beneath that, I want to make sure I make the tree a little wider so that it looks like it's thicker at the bottom. I started out the trunk pretty thin so that I had that uh, sort of wiggle room where I can always make the bottom wider. If I start out real wide, and I get too wide at the top, then I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to have a giant tree. It's going to end up looking like one of those baobab trees real wide at the bottom. We don't want to kind of do that. So I start out thinner. I can always add more paint. So I always start out with less. Uh, less is better to begin with. And you can always add more. Uh, and here on this sample, the trunk divides into three pieces. And I haven't even kind of done that. So I'm, I'm going to divide that trunk a little bit lower down in a Y shape to kind of be faithful to my to my sample. Oops, and like that my overlap was in a, an awkward spot there. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make another overlap. Okay, just keep overlapping them until I like how they look. And if I decide they look weird, I'll just put leaves over them. <laughs> I, can, I can always do that. Nobody will ever know because it'll be leafy. Uh, the reason why it was awkward is because the overlap went right into a previous branch that I did. It reminds me of uh, something I learned when I was in art school about just, um, we used to have a joke about the edge doctor coming in and fixing all the edges. They were <laughs> covering each other where they shouldn't have been. That's, that's as good as art jokes get, I'm sorry. So let's see, dividing that trunk into pieces, just making sure that here I have, this is a pretty wide area there. I want to make sure that the trunk beneath that is wider. So I'm going to go beneath that, go a little wider. And that way that tree will look natural. And also want to make sure I paint that bottom edge. So I have that gallery wrap consistent also. There we go. I like that illusion of the tree wrapping around the bottom. And anywhere like here, my little 
branch, it kind of broke off real flat because I didn't lift that brush off neatly. I'm going to make sure I go back and add little nice uh, twigs at the end that are pointy. And that's where a little skinnier brush might come in handy. I only have this little one little skinny brush sitting here. Maybe you have a skinnier one in your collection and you can make little tiny twigs. It's not super critical with this painting because we're going to put in leaves in just a minute, but I wanted to have as pointy little twigs at the end as I could. So I'm lifting that brush up and off and you may need to add, it looks like I need to add just a little more water to that paint. So I clean that brush off in the water jar and blotted it on the paper towel real quick and it was just damp and that, that allowed me to spin that brush around in the paint again and get it thinned out and I, then I can lift it up and off and get those nice pointy little pointy little twigs. Let me paint that up close for you. So pressing the brush to the canvas and lifting it up and off in the shape of a Y or a V. And I'm getting these little pointy edges. I can take advantage of the point on the tips of the bristles of that brush. And I am not overlapping them a lot here, but I can overlap those those little branches too. They can cross over each other to make that look like it's coming back and forward in space and we have a nice three-dimensional tree. I don't want to make it all flat. I have done that in the past. I have made very flat looking trees and sometimes that can look pretty cool actually. There's a painting in my husband's office upstairs that we painted for a piece that we did for the local news here and the it's a, a little uh, heart-shaped tree. I think it was Valentine's Day. It was a couple's painting and it was Valentine's tree. And so it's got a little heart shape uh, in the trunk and there were no overlapping branches. I always look at the painting because I'm always sitting up in the office and uh, I didn't make it overlapping, but it actually looks pretty cool because it's uh, kind of a graphic -y, uh, like graphic art, if you will, not it's not meant to look natural. So, you know, everybody knows obviously that trees are not heart shaped. Uh, so it, it's got, it's kind of a stylized tree and that, that can be nice too. It doesn't have to be, it can be whatever you want it to be because it's your painting. So in that case, it worked out really well. But in this case, I want to make, I'm making a more, uh, I want to make this a more naturalistic tree. So I'm, overlapping those branches to make it look three-dimensional. Some of those are kind of fork shape. Got more, I, you know, I started out with like all these two branch, two twig branches, but some of them you want to make three and four twig branches. They don't all have to be the same. They can all be different. It's hard not to kind of make, uh, patterns when you paint, I find, you like repeat patterns. I don't know, that has benefits and it has drawbacks. Uh, the drawbacks to it is you want to kind of make some things thicker and some things thinner and some things bigger and some things smaller to keep it natural looking and to uh, make it a little bit unbalanced to give a visual interest. But the, uh, what was I going to say? So that's the benefit of it. But the, or, making a regular pattern. I lost that train of thought. <sighs> train just went right off the tracks. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, but sometimes it, it can be a benefit to make a regular pattern because, um, oh, I'm forgetting the word. Like uh, there's, there is some kind of little bit regular patterns in nature. What is that? Oh, when you make fractals, you know, fractals tend to be kind of, they're not repeated, but they tend to, like those shapes repeat, but they're not ever exactly the same, is what I'm saying. So it's kind of a balance of both. There's a benefit to, to either way. Let's see. Making those little branches. So once you decide you have enough branches, and I wasn't, I didn't exactly duplicate my sample there. I was just uh, make, bumping up those edges of my trunk there too. I don't want to make the edges totally straight. I want to make my tree kind of interesting. Oh, make sure you take a step back. So I just noticed this little lower branch needs some, needs some 
fixing. <laughs> it needed a little bit more interesting twigs on it. Oh, forget that. Got to step back from your work. And I also want to make sure that like here it's a little bit wider trunk. And I want to make sure it's widest at the bottom. So I'm going to come back where it's lower and make the branch wider where it connects to that trunk. There we go. Always making adjustments. Just want to make sure it's wider from the point of growth. And skinnier as we move away from it. But once you're happy with your branches, then you can add a canopy of leaves to it. So um, the original sample was actually painted with a fan brush. You might have one of these at your disposal. There's a couple of reasons why that was the case. First of all, this fan brush is a boar's hair bristle, which is a stiffer kind of bristle. The brushes I've been using are those nylon brushes. So the uh, bristles of the brush are smoother and softer. And so they make a particular smooth, soft pattern as you paint. But it, the boar's hair bristle kind of keeps the texture of the brush a little bit more. And so the original painting was painted with one of these because you can put the paint on the tips of the bristles of the brush and then kind of poke the canvas with it and get a particular uh, texture with it. But I wasn't sure if I, I, I wanted to kind of uh, stick with very basic uh, supplies for this painting on Zoom because I didn't know if you had one of these at your disposal. So that is just one option you can use if you have one of these. You can test it out and try out that technique. Otherwise, we can use the nylon brushes that we've been using on this painting, which is what I'm going to do with this sample. Uh, there's kind of two different directions to go with this. Um, and you can always test this out on a piece of paper and try it out before you commit to the canvas. Let me just show you how it looks in case you have one at your, at your place of painting. I'm going to, um, which reminds me, I totally never even mentioned, uh, if you like this video, you can always, uh, drop a tip in the virtual tip jar at Ernstein Arts as my little Venmo. I never even mentioned that. Uh, working for tips tonight, just like we would at the bar. Got, got the drink. I totally forgot about my drink. I'm not drinking enough at this bar. But uh, if you want to pretend you're at the bar with me, you can always drop a virtual tip in the virtual tip jar at Venmo. My Venmo is at Ernstein Arts, and that's here. And I think there's a it's up on my little Zoom square too, uh, if you need that. But if you have one of these boar's hair bristle brushes, and it doesn't have to be a fan brush shape, it can be any shape, but it's a stiffer bristle, then you can try this out. You can dip the tips of the bristles of the brush in the black paint, and you can lightly, I loaded up the tips of the bristles of the brush with the paint, so it's kind of got a fair amount of paint on it, but I'm gonna use a light touch as I tap that over my tree. So I just get that uh, texture of the, of the bristles. That's a real light touch. You can see where I tap that. If I tap it a little harder, or if I hold the brush at an angle, I'll get more of, um, in, because this is a fan brush, I'll get more of an arc shape, which is actually how that sample was done. But I don't prefer that look personally. This is just personal to the artist. I'm going to just use the tips of the bristles and tap it straight on and I'm twisting the brush around on my fingertips to get different angles on that texture so that it doesn't look like any particular shape. That is just one option. If you do not have one of these brushes, that's okay too. We can have different kinds of leaves on our tree. That is just one option. So I'm going to use my medium-sized brush and show you a different option. I took that out of the water jar and I'm wiping that on the paper towel and here again wiping that flat so that I get the water off the wooden part as well as the tips of the bristles. You want to make sure just to have a damp brush and then I can dip that medium-sized brush just the tips of the bristles in the black paint and it might take you a little bit longer but you can make little dots with the tips of the bristles of that medium brush as well. I mean, of course you can go with a bigger brush, but I would start out, I always start out with less is better. So I'm just using that medium sized brush and I'm tapping that tap, tap, tap 
just little dots to make leaves there. Let me hold that a little closer so you can see how that goes. Just loading the tips of the bristles, that medium sized brush with black paint. And I'm twisting that around also, twisting that around in my fingertips and then tapping it in different directions over the branches. Now keep in mind that these leaves don't all connect to those branches. A trick that illustrators use is that some of those leaves just fly near the branches and they're just dots in the sky nearby the branches. So in other words, think about letting the birds fly through. Leave spaces so that you can see the sky through the background of your tree and they don't those leaves don't all have to connect to the branches because your mind will kind of visually connect it without even thinking about it. You'll think, oh, leaves on a tree. And the, 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 the viewer will just kind of know that leaves are connected to tree. They don't actually have to connect and it'll give it a more open look if you just let those fly near the branches. I do want them denser kind of over the twigs and branches and uh, just a little more fading away as I move out towards those points but but they don't all have to connect and I'm using that medium sized brush and just tap tap tapping those on there if you make bigger brush strokes I don't want to I don't know what, uh, if I want to do that on here but you can use bigger brush strokes and actually make little uh, sort of diamonds and squares using that medium sized brush that's okay too it'll be a different texture but um i'm just using the very tips of the bristles to make those little dots to tap them on that sort of <laughs> yeah, we bring up surat again and make those little stipple brush strokes if we tap them on there but it's okay to make them bigger too if you if you don't have the patience and you want to make little bigger uh brush strokes it's okay to tap those on there make bigger leaves it'll also if you didn't like how your branches look it'll also give you an opportunity to cover over those with the texture if you make bigger leaves so that could be a good thing it's up to you as the artist maybe you like your leaves better than your branches i'm gonna let my branches show through i'm gonna kind of be mindful of where i put those leaves because i like them fairly well and i'm just gonna leave some of those branches showing through there and some of the sky. Also trying to be faithful to my sample over there in case you wanted to match it up. But tap, tap, tapping all those little leaves on there. Tap, 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 tap. And I'm twisting the brush around to make sure I get different shapes out of that brush. As I, before I touch the brush to the canvas, I'm twisting it around in my fingers kind of each time to get different textures out of that brush. And also, sometimes I'm touching it a little bit harder and sometimes a little bit lighter to get different size leaves also. Sometimes if I press a little heavier and get bigger leaves, press a little bit lighter, get smaller leaves. So we got all that on. And we wanna make sure that we have some of those leaves kind of in, some of them can like fly totally separate from the bunch to really open up the look at that tree, make, make one or two kind of wildly outside the set so that you get, it really just opens up, gives a place for the birds to fly through, opens up the canopy of leaves and makes it look nice and natural. I want to make some lower down in here. I want to make them, I'm going to make it more dense, I think in an arc shape here. And I want to leave my lower branches showing a little bit more. Tap, tap, tap. All those little leaves in there. It's important to step back from it too as you do this step. And do it slowly so that you know where you want each leaf. Because, you know, painting in black obviously can't, it's harder to take it away. So you want to make sure you do more. Uh, deliberate with your brush strokes. La la la. Got all my little leaves in there. 
and I I want to make them denser in some areas, more filled in, and more open in other areas of the tree. Just to make it interesting, kind of an interesting pattern. Make it a little bit denser in the center too, and fading uh, to more open out towards the edges. All right. I can tell we're just about done with this painting because my assistant is just about <laughs> done listening to me talk about it. So let's see, we want to finish that up there. So make sure you check our upcoming schedule and you can see the different paintings that we have coming up at Sitting and Painting Hampton. And there's always different teachers teaching them too. My colleagues are uh, doing some little classes at the studio now and you can sign up for those classes or else you can uh, take another Zoom class with us online. And uh, we always have different paintings. We have about 500 different paintings that we paint. So there's always something new to paint with us. So check those out on our schedule at Sipping and Painting Hampton. And be sure that you uh, check out our YouTube channel and like this video and subscribe to our channel and uh, we can make more videos and we can all become YouTube famous together on the Zoom. Make sure you make those outer, make the outer edge of that tree kind of, I'm, I'm making some of these branches longer just to give it an interesting uh, texture to the outer edge of the tree, making some of them point out further because I want it to be, I want it to be an interesting shape. And actually it didn't even, I didn't even make branches beneath some of these and that's okay. I can either leave it that way or I can go back and paint a branch in if I feel like that looks too funny without a branch. Even if you didn't paint them before, you can paint them later. Totally up to you. You can add some in. And actually on this sample, there's a little bit of a highlight from the sun. So I'm gonna make sure I faithful to that. I'm gonna add just a little bit of the gray paint white and black mixed together and add just a little bit of a highlight on that sun side of that tree. Just a couple dashes here and there. If you want to be totally faithful to the sample, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just, I'm, I looked at my sample and I thought, oh, forgot it, forgot the detail. Gotta put that in. So a little gray paint. I'll show you that up close just in a couple spots that's on the side with the sun. I just added a few lines of that gray paint. Let me hold that up so you can see that. And then you get that reflection from the sun. And then make sure you step back from your painting before you decide you're done. I, uh, you can spend as much time as you like painting tonight and finish it up. Make sure when you do finish that you sign your painting though. I always put my initials in the corner. I'm going to use my little skinny brush. I'm wiping that off on that paper towel to get it nice and clean. And I'm going to pick up some black paint and put my initials in the corner. If you have a paint pen, I did have some paint pens, but I can't find them now. So I'm just going to use my little skinny brush and put my initials in the corner. And you can make sure everybody knows who did the painting. So the artist is famous. If you want to pick up this painting, it'll be for sale at the studio at Sipping and Painting Hampton. Come in and see us. And uh, we're there uh, usually from, I believe, in the afternoon, noon to three. I want to say look at our website to double check that. And then you can pick up either masks or kits or buy this original painting and or just bring in your painting and stop and say hi and show us your original. And um, if you'd like to show me your original on Zoom, we can actually, we can take a picture together with our original painting showing if you want to, oh, look at that, beautiful. So Sabrina, do you want to take a picture for the, for the little Zoom for posterity? Sabrina? Oh, wait, my assistant, they went away. Do you want to take a picture for the Zoom picture? Can you take a photo? Sure. Yeah. There we go. I'll hold mine up and we can look at that. <laughs> I was a little bit of an angle. There we go. 
I love the colors you have on yours. The nice aqua. It looks like a very tropical sky. I love that. It's beautiful. So um, make sure you spend as much time as you want finishing it up. I'll leave the uh, zoom up there so you can see the original uh, sample on the zoom square from the studio. And I also have that one sitting here and I'll leave my painting for inspiration. Hopefully it was <laughs> inspirational enough, but take your time finishing up and you can look at that sample as much as you like. But I'm glad you joined me tonight to paint at Sipping and Painting Hampton virtual Zoom. And I thank you for painting with me tonight. Make sure you clean your brushes and enjoy your beverage and cheers to you.